hiking 110 miles in the Irish countryside. The summer had just hit the Northern Hemisphere and I was looking for an adventure that wasn't halfway across the world. I wanted mountains, countryside, rugged wild coastline and animals, lots of them. That was settled then, island it was. I'm Liam by the way. I'd be hiking 110 miles of the Dingle Peninsula in Ireland's southwest Atlantic coast. A loop that would see me start in Tralee and also finish there. I'll be wild camping in my tent wherever I can. I'll be living out my pack for this one and I'll be sampling the local delicacies. So I'm expecting leprechauns, pubs, Guinness, shamrocks and much much more. I've heard this is one of the best places to see the authentic island. I haven't planned too much and I'll let nature take care of me once I'm there. I know Ireland can be magical and I'm pretty excited for this one. It was only an hour flight to Kerry Airport and I was soon in Tralee. I had a look around and seen lots of pubs. I was pretty tempted. The start point would be the Tralee Museum. It was a brilliant day for walking and I was eager to get the miles in. I started to head out of town. I usually don't have to look at a map on the first day. I look for the hills and that's where I head. A lot of the adventure I'll be following the wild Atlantic way. Mixed in with the newer buildings was an old thatch roof cottage. There was probably a family of leprechauns living there. The route seemed well signposted. All I had to do was take in the scenery and walk. There were a few grey clouds in the distance. I wasn't worried though. Ireland seemed so similar to being back home in England. The streets, the houses, the weather too. I should have been worried. My waterproofs eventually went on. I came across a herd of very friendly horses. No, don't bite my hand. It was nice to get into the hills and follow the ancient trails. I'm not sure what it is, but whenever it rains, I get a surge of energy. Maybe it's a primal thing with us, but I really do love it. I think knowing it can't get any worse, wet shoes and clothes, it's only up from here. It honestly makes me feel alive. I have just come out of a huge rainstorm. It's passed down that way in the hills. And right now, blue skies. The sun's out, but Ireland should be fun. Some seriously changeable weather. So uh, the terrain's so similar to the UK. The people are great already. Fingers crossed. Until you hear my accent. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Beautiful June. Summer's day. In Ireland, eighteen pound for a flight on Ryanair. You cannot beat that. Occasionally, I'd hop over fences and gates made by the farmers. got my first view of the wild Atlantic coast with the hills in the distance. Ireland was already beautiful. With a population of only 5 million, Ireland is very sparsely populated in the countryside. I hadn't come across many people for a while. They use kilometres here instead of miles, something I had to get used to. Another pub, the Irish really were trying to tempt me. After a long day, I was ready to stop for the night.
So I've just set up camp. Um, I'm actually on the trail. So in the morning, I'll just cross the river. You can see there's a few stepping stones that way. So I'll head that way. But today has been a good day. Uh, I've got to keep it down because there's a couple farms, but I'm on the trail, so hopefully I'll be all right. What I've just been doing then is sorting out my food for the next three to four days. And usually this is it. So I'll get like wraps, cheese, chocolate bars, cereal bars, and you get the protein. So salami, chorizo, sausage, and then just some nuts and dark chocolate. I've got my trusty couscous with olive oil and then some oats in the morning. And usually that does me and I can top up if I stop at a store during, you know, midday, I can get a proper meal. And this usually does me. So I, I take it out of all the uh, the packaging and I put it in individual Ziploc bags and it saves space and weight. And it's just a lot easier really. So yeah, it took about 20 minutes to do that. And now I can just chill out next to the river. The morning had brought a long rain. It didn't last long though. Sometimes the light catches the clouds and hills perfectly. The only thing you can do is stop and take in. I don't speak crow, but he didn't seem very happy. I've never seen these type of cows before. I was heading towards some woodland. I feel at home in the woods. I was running low on water and I could hear a water source nearby. I was in luck. That is honestly one of the best sights I can possibly think of. I love it. In the middle of nowhere, when you come across a water tap, like a fountain like that, a fresh drink in one. Oh, so grateful. You just refresh yourself, fill your water bottle up, and then you don't have to worry then for the next half day to a day. Two liters, or if you want to carry more you can, but. I uh, slept really well last night. I actually fell asleep at about 8.30. <laughs> uh, woke up about six, um, kind of just chilled out until eight and then set off. So I've got a full day's walk ahead. Hoping for about 20 miles, but I might do a bit further if I'm feeling good at the end of the day, but we'll see. It's, uh, Oh, the sun. Love it. The lambs would usually bolt whenever I got near, unlike the parents who were used to humans. I'd pass old castle ruins like this on the coast. It's the perfect place to stop an incoming army. As road walking goes, I don't mind it, but this was something else. This has to be the straightest road I've ever seen. All the way, just up. And that's where I'm heading right now. It's about a mile, probably a mile and a half. Anna Skull, I think you pronounce it. So we should have a cafe and a shop. Hopefully, it'll be open. Seems really nice, it hasn't rained once. Going past some really nice houses in the countryside. So uh, it really is. The UK and Ireland are just so similar. It's got like farmers fields all over the place. It's nice. 
Some time later, I made it into Anna School. The road seemed to never end. I got myself a well-earned coffee and had a look around. The South Pole in, it got me interested. I came across a memorial for an Antarctic explorer named Tom Crean. This stone was actually brought from close to Ernest Shackleton's grave in South Georgia Island, which is close to Antarctica. I couldn't believe it really. Just started to rain. I don't think it's going to last long because it's just one cloud above me and there's blue sky everywhere else, but yeah, I can't even bother putting waterproofs on. It's kind of nice actually. See, it's just stopping as well. Honestly, UK and Ireland, exactly the same. <laughs> Weather is just constantly changing. By now I was in the heart of the Irish countryside. The sheep were in abundance. Cows were grazing. The flowers were in full bloom too. This tractor had probably been used for years on the surrounding fields. You know what I've noticed on adventures like this is fresh, whole cow's milk is the best hydrating fluid you can possibly have. I mean, I've just drank half of this two minutes ago and it's already in my system, I feel great. I was pretty dehydrated. And uh, it's better than water, better than isotonic sports drinks better than the tablets I use for the hydration, way, way better. So I just picked myself some whole local full fat cow's milk and it's a red top in Ireland instead of blue in the UK. At first I thought it was the, the skimmed milk, I was like, oh, not a chance. But yeah, I just love whole milk and yeah, one of my uh, go-to things now, as well as I always try to pick up like fresh fruit, banana, some blueberries, just to get the vitamins in. It's better than a chocolate bar. Energized by the fresh local milk, I began to eat up the miles. These could well have been the cows that provided the milk that I was drinking. There was no traffic whatsoever on the farm roads. It was a hiking highway. I'd follow another long straight country road and I ended up in a town called Dingle. I found a campsite so I thought I'd treat myself. I got an ice cold shower and chilled out for the rest of the night. I woke up early I got a wash and brush my teeth. Breakfast was a fresh local milk, a coffee and a banana. So we're following farm roads right now for a little bit and then I'll go off road into the hills and I'll be following the wild Atlantic coast apparently. And I'll be looking for a spot tonight near the coast maybe. Trying to get about 20 miles in but I've got about three and a half days of walking left, or three and a bit. It's come at me really quick, about 75 miles, so I might have to slow it down. Cause I've given myself a week to do this and just, but I've got a bit quick. <laughs> I'm enjoying it though. The weather is a bit overcast. It rained this morning, but it's uh, stopped luckily. I don't even check the weather anymore. I don't plan, I hardly plan anything. You could call that a rookie mistake, but I just like being in the moment and not knowing what's around the corner. <laughs> and uh, I think it's better that way. He 
You really can't beat walking along the beach. The fresh sea breeze is enough to put a smile on anyone's face. There was a sign for hikers, at least I was on the right track. I see a goat sitting on a table looking like the king of the pack. They really do make me laugh. I actually tried some locally caught lobster on a sandwich. 10 out of 10. I'm pretty sure this boat had caught the lobster I was eating earlier on in the morning. You can't get any fresher than that. This part of Ireland was my favourite yet. Now I know why they call it the Wild Atlantic Way. You're never too far away from turquoise waters with golden sandy beaches. I had to pinch myself to make sure I was still in Ireland. The most westernly bar in Europe was close by. It wasn't on my trail, so I kept going on. It was by far the hottest point of the day, and the sun hoodie came in handy. Oh wow, that is a drop. Oh my, that's actually a cave. <laughs> it goes out to the ocean. Wow. Got a ship coming in. So, there was a little road that ended there, and now this is just past the farmer's fields next to the, the cliffs. So, this is the Irish Wild Atlantic coast, right on the tip. And if you head just straight, you'd probably hit the southern tip of Greenland. If you go slightly left, you'd probably hit Canada, and then more left, you'd hit America eventually but uh, that is the Atlantic Ocean huge stretch of water there and this is Ireland I think that might be Mount Brandon the second highest mountain in Ireland and I think I'm heading that way actually <laughs> look at the clouds clouds always cling to the mountains wherever you go in the world. I decided to take a rest next to the cliffs. I walked past some ancient stones on top of the hill, similar to the ones at Stonehenge. Any time the route allowed, I'd take the beach. Have a look at this. Pretty sure that's a spider crab. I mean, that's my hand, so. It's just bigger than my hand. <laughs> they get huge as well, apparently. I stopped at a proper Irish pub and it didn't disappoint. Sampled the local Kerry Ale, I was speechless. After nourishing myself with one of the finest ales in Ireland, it was time to look for a camp. I was feeling a bit drunk to be honest. I found a spot on top of the dunes overlooking the beach and the sunset. I've just been taking my shoes off and I just happened to notice something crawling on my leg. And I do this every night, it's important, but this little thing was crawling on me and that there is a tick and what they do is they burrow into your skin usually on your legs somewhere around here with your ankles and they suck on your blood and if they've been preying on mammals like deer they can give you something called Lyme disease and it's quite bad so it's important you get these little critters off you
I was up bright and early the next morning. Behind them hills is what was to come. Each day that goes by on these adventures, my pack becomes lighter and lighter with less food. Counterintuitively, I actually get more miles in towards the end days. I was walking through a Gaelic speaking fishing village. There were plenty of these on the southern coast. I'm pretty sure that is a Gaelic football stadium. I don't have a clue what Gaelic football is. I'm pretty sure they use like bats or like, I don't even know. I'm gonna butcher it no matter what I say. That's pretty cool. In the shadow of Mount Brandon over there. That's a pretty cool stadium. <laughs> Tell you what, Ireland has been beautiful. I've had some amazing weather. Whew. So, uh, got a great sleep. And now I'm just following along the coast, just before I head to Mount Brandon. Uh, Mount Brandon is the second highest mountain in Ireland. I think it goes to about 900 meters, but I'll only be I think about 600 meters. I think they, they call it walking on the shoulder of Mount Brandon. And then it just declines into the little village of Brandon. And then it's kind of just plain sailing then, just flat along the coast to the finish point, which was the museum where I started at. One big loop. So yeah, if I get the hardest point over with, which is today, it's just easy so it's hot humid and we've got 600 meters of incline to do so i can actually see it as well uh that is mount brandon up there the clouds i mean that is it's not very high when you compare it to like the lake district or scotland it's nothing but when you compare it to what you see here with just little hills, pretty flat. The majority of Ireland is quite flat. Uh, it does kind of look a bit, a bit daunting. One thing in my favour was the clouds. At least every now and again, I get some shade. It was only 20 degrees Celsius, but after being in the elements for 12 hours a day, the sun soon catches up with you. In Ireland, pubs were my friend. They meant food and drink, a place to get out the elements, they did wonders for morale. I got a coffee and some crisps. fine with the hills, if you try to battle against them, you won't win. You just gotta go with whatever it throws at you. Nearly at the top. Oh, it's a steep one. Funny story. <laughs> Somewhere right, where is it? Right down there, just after I had a, a coffee at the pub, car pulled up and he's like, are you Liam? <laughs> Just in a, a random road in, you know, Southern Ireland. And uh, there's a guy who watches, watches these. So shout out to you. Who would have thought? I said, what are the chances? <laughs> uh, nearly there, nearly there, let's go. So it's just over. Whoa, don't fall. Just over there. And there we are. Whew. That is a great sight. I think I head down and then follow the coast. Probably somewhere over there. Oh, that looks beautiful. The hills farms, the beach, the blue, turquoise water, the sun's out, clouds, love it. Just me up here. Okay, down we go. I 
just come across this. Um, basically a crash site of six Polish airmen who were killed and buried in Belfast. I think it was around here, maybe this spot. as part of the plane. Wow. Rest in peace. 20th of December. That'll be cold up here, 1943. It must suck to crash here during December. Full of snow, minus temperatures. Rest in peace. It was great to be walking on flat ground again. It's a blessing after all of that incline and decline. I made my way to the village of Brandon, the village that Mount Brandon is named after. It was finally time. I had definitely earned this. That evening I walked another few hours down the coast. I was slightly tipsy, but I tried to get the miles in. In the morning, I got up just before sunrise and I set off what would be the last few miles. You have to respect the birds, they're always up early. It was just me, them, and a distant hum of traffic. Nearly here, I cannot wait. I'm just coming through a nice, peaceful park. Uh, it's overcast, it's been raining slightly, but not enough for a raincoat. It just feels good to be in Trilly again. To be back where it all started. That's what I was following originally, the Kerry Camino, and then it splits off after Dingle, I'm pretty sure, onto the actual Dingle way. And here we are, the Trilly Museum, where it all started. It's a it's a bit wetter than I, when I first started, but it's all good. I think I've got a touch, haven't I? Here we go. Man, I feel good, really good. Just sat outside the museum right now. I don't think it's open, so I'm on the steps. But 110 miles of the Irish countryside. It has been good. The weather has been insanely good. Got very lucky with that. The people I met on along the way, a lot nicer than I thought they ever would be. Even with my English accent, uh, yeah, you can't fault them. I can even see the sun trying to come out. I, uh, I really like Ireland. I definitely got to come again. What a place. It's uh, so similar to the UK, but in other ways, it's completely different. It's got its own quirks. Yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed this one. Really did. Well, that's Ireland done with. <laughs>